if you clicked on this video, the first thing you might be thinking is, what makes this any different to the standard real grade tall geese? And the answer is, not a whole lot. You might also be wondering, why would you be bothered picking this up and... Well, there'd only be two reasons to that. One, you hate yellow, and two, you don't like painting. Besides that though, it's pretty much the same thing. But anyway, there is no denying that the real grade tall geese is awesome, so let's get right into the review. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review, and today I'm taking a look at the real grade Tall Geese TV animation version. So right out of the box, I have to say I absolutely adore this. It's just the same as the normal Tall Geese, but darker and cooler. And it is premium Bandai, as you can tell from that box back there. So if you do want one of your own, as usual, I got mine through Baiyi. You can get yours through there too. Link is down there in the description. Now here we go. So jumping right on into the review with the overview, and here is exactly everything that comes in the box. So as well as the Tall Geese itself, we have everything we would have seen with the standard version of the real grade Tall Geese. That is the swappable style hands, that awesome Dobergon. We've got that shield this time rocking a new exclusive to this box sticker style decal. We've also got beam sabers in pink and we also have some clear blades in case you want to do some customization. Lastly then we have the standard real grade releases sticker style decals. These are nothing new and that is what's in here. Anyway let's start right into it with the tall geese itself. So anyway, there is the real grade Tall Geese animation version out of the box, just snapped together with a little bit of extra effort. As for the extra effort, it's the same as usual, a little bit of black panel liner on all of the white and the grey, and a little bit of brown panel liner on the vents in the chest. That is it, otherwise this is a straight out of box build. And as is always the case with the real grade Tall Geese, it looks phenomenal, but on to question the first. And that is, how different really is this version of the Tall Geese to the one we would have seen already? You're going to be paying some kind of premium price for this because, well it is P Bandai, it came out a few months ago. So is it worth that extra price on top of the normal G Tall Geese? And the answer is, well, probably not unless you just like model kits that are unpainted. If you collect model kits in their unpainted state, that might be what you're going for, but hey, that's enough babbling, let's check it out side by side with the standard release and uh, physically these are absolutely identical. So yeah, the only real difference is, is color. So what would have been yellow on the standard release of the real grade tall geese is now either black or a light gray depending on where they are on the model kit. And I will mention one aspect about this that does make the build a little bit confusing if you're not paying full attention all of the time. So what we get in here is the standard real grade tall geese manual and then this little bit of a pamphlet. This tells you what bits not to use and what bits to use, which means there's doubles of a lot of parts in here, which means you can put the wrong thing in the wrong place and be like, damn it, later on, and have to take it apart and put things back on. Yes, yes, that did happen to me. But besides that, there isn't really all that big of a difference. You can just get yourself some black paint, some light gray paint, and you'll get the exact same thing. Actually, you'll need some very vivid red too, because the that brush section, or whatever you'd call it on the top of his big old helmet, that is in a more vivid shade of red in the animation version right here. But besides that, we've just got more black on the backpack, black on the torso, black on the side skirts, and the only other color difference is we've got this kind of greeny brown, or should I say browny green, in these sections on the front of its clavicle armor. On the standard release, those were grey, but besides that, exactly the same. The decals are exactly the same, besides that one on the shield. So yeah, it's exactly the same, so let's bust on through this pretty quickly. So moving into that full 360 degree spin, and like I mentioned already, this is physically exactly the same as the full release real grey tall geese. The only difference, of course, is it's now more accurate to the 90s Gundam anime that was Gundam Wing. I think this looks fantastic. The darker colour scheme, the more subdued look, looks so damn good. And that fiery burning red plume up on the top of its head just looks exactly like I would have expected it to. Personally, I did find all the yellow on the standard real grey tall geese to be a little bit distracting. Not as cool as this right here. So once again, if you want something anime accurate, this might be the one you're looking for. So anyway, moving back onto those accessories, and here is everything that came in the box. So we talked about this already, so let's check out everything one by one. And once again, we saw it before, so let's blast on through it. So when it comes to the weapons, first up in here, we've got those beam sabers. We've got two sets of blades. These are the pink. Let's get them attached. There's what those pink beam sabers look like attached. And we've two holding hands in here. These are your standard sandwich style holding hands. That is, there's a back to them, a front to them, the beam sabers, the ham and the sandwich, slap them together. 
We have two regular style holding hands and one of these right hand extended angle fencing style holding hands. The beams in here, they come in both pink and clear. Clear is very handy because you can paint it in whatever color you want, especially if you're customizing it. More than likely you won't be painting this kit because, well, why'd you buy a TV color? Tall geese if you were going to paint it, but you can just use those in other kits. And while we're on the topic of hands, when it comes to other hands in here, we've got a pair of widespread dynamic and a pair of solid fists with no hole. When the beam sabers are not in use, you can just pull out the beams and the handles can be stored on these twisting handles on the rear side of the shield. You can then attach the shield into the shoulder of the tall geese by flipping open this hatch, attaching it in there, and I will mention the arm that attaches the shield has the best articulation. You can put this wherever you want, move it all around the kit, bring it up front for defense, it can go anywhere that you want. I love it. And speaking of this arm, there's also a matching one on the absolutely badass Dober gun. So the Dober gun that comes with the real grade right here is so impressive. Sure, it may not have the spring loaded action of the master grade, but that's kind of pointless. But this just looks so cool. I love this weapon to pieces. The magazine is in a different color, which is always cool. It isn't necessarily all that accurate for pulling out and displaying, but it still looks cool that it is in a different color. The handles on this are great. We've got this one up front that can swing up like so. It can also pivot up to the sides like that, which is great. And the rear handle is even more impressive. The way it can kind of seamlessly swing side to side. The handle pivots while the front section pivots too. So you can always get it into exactly the pose that you want all of the time. This is so impressive. Once again, this can be held up in the shoulder just by popping it out like that, sticking the Dober gun into that peg hole like so. So it is always up there ready to go. I have to say, this is one of my all-time favorite Gundam weapons. This and the GN sword. I just love weapons that can just kind of hang out where they're needed and then just pop into action once they're ready. This I adore. Also, there is a bit of a firing action to this particular weapon. So it may not be spring-loaded and awesome like the Master Grade version, but if you push the barrel back in, the rear section pops out. And if you push the rear section in, the barrel pops out ever so slightly. Very subtle, but undoubtedly very, very cool. Oh, and I almost forgot we do have a little scale Zex in there, but it seems like he's wandering off to Family Mart. So as this is technically a kit that I've reviewed twice already, once being the standard real grade tall geese, the other time being the real grade tall geese 3, there is really no point in me going through all of the articulation all over again. The articulation on here is great. This is one of the first two real grade kits to completely kick the inner frame. The first was the Oryx Zero Unicorn, so that does mean it is almost like a small master grade and holds up really well with little to no early real grade syndrome. It can get a little bit floppy in areas over time, but that's more so because it's a small delicate kit, not having one of those rubbery inner frames. As for some of the things worth mentioning about this, however, just in case you don't want to go check out another video, inside of the skirting armors, we do have these funny little peg sections. These attach into the holes in the side of the legs to keep that armor moving in tandem with the leg, but you can tuck them out, move them away, and then get more out of the leg. The Tall Geese has some very cool gimmicks to do with its boosters, including this action right here, which is utterly hilarious. Pull up the flap, thruster comes out. We've got some thrusters tucked away in the side skirting, as well as round in the butt flap. Locking mechanism in its lower back, so you still get an ab crunch, but when you don't want it, you can lock it into place so you don't get any sag to the front. But of course, the coolest aspect about the gimmicks on this kit has to be those huge opening thrusters with so many intricate parts around the back. These are such a joy to look at once they're open. There is a whole lot going on inside of them, and those are sheer awesomeness. Once again, if you want to see more about the gimmicks and the articulation on here, check out the original review. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and just like I said with the real grade Tall Geese 3, this is exactly the same and is gold tier. And a gold tier real grade means this is one hell of a model kit that you cannot miss. But that is more so going for the standard version of the real grade Tall Geese, because this is exactly the same. Is this worth it to you or not? Well, that is hard to say. Once again, it's the same exact same awesome kit, looking fantastic in gloss matte and some awesome colors. And the answer is, do you want some yellow plastic and a sticker? Are you willing to pay for it? Then go for this. If you're a collector and you just 
need to have everything in its kind of original format without that paint on top and just know that you have the animation color version of Tolgi's, then I say go for it. Besides that, I say just go for the normal one. It'll cost you a lot less money and painting it would not be that difficult. Anyway, if you do want one of these of your own, I got mine through Baii, you can too, link in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews and I'll see you next time. As always, I cannot end this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video, for dropping a like, subscribing, and of course to each and every one of you that supports me over on the channel memberships or over on Patreon like Craig Jerry, Tyler Sanders, the ambassador for Asymmetric Cats, Caleb Engel.